carnivore diet, in my opinion, is not about eating just meat. It's about eating nose to tail in the animal. And so it's important to realize that basically what we're talking about with a carnivorous diet is not just muscle meat. No human population would have ever done that. No population of indigenous hunters does that. When you kill an animal out of respect for the animal and out of desire for nutrients, we're going to eat the whole animal, which means we're going to, to use the hide for clothes. We're going to eat the bone marrow. We're going to eat the organs like liver. We're going to eat the muscle meat. We're going to eat the brain. Now, these foods are not necessarily things that are palatable to the westernized person these days, but the concept is that there are unique nutrients in various compartments of the animal. So the way to construct a nose-to-tail carnivore diet is to really think about eating muscle meat, an adequate amount of animal fat, because I think it's important to consider the fat-to-protein ratio, and I think many in the carnivore community may be eating too much muscle meat um, and not enough fat. I actually believe that humans are fat hunters first and foremost, and we know that humans don't function very well on protein as fuel. We use fat very well as fuel in a ketogenic state. So getting enough fat is important by eating actual animal fat. Um, and then also eating organs, you know, things like liver. And perhaps in Europe, people are more, uh, more accepting of liver and more appreciative of the nutrient content or more appreciative of the nutrient content of various organs. But basically a nose to tail carnivore diet is eating meat, eating an appropriate amount of animal fat, which I think is pretty robust amount of fat to fuel our metabolism and also eating animal organs. Liver is probably the most important and, one. And would the fat be, you know, would ghee and butter be part of that as well? Ghee and butter could be. In most of the patients that I work with, I suggest eliminating dairy completely, at least for the first month, because dairy can trigger some people. Butter is going to have some of the milk solids in it. Um, ghee is generally free of those, but may have a small amount for people. I recommend actual animal fat, and people seem to react the best to that. You go to the butcher and you ask for trimmings, or you ask for suet, which yeah. is kidney fat. And that's quite delicious if you just pan fry it briefly or something. It, it's pretty rich and it's really good. And, and I think that that's what our ancestors would have done. In fact, there are anthropologic reports of people killing animals or hunting animals that were lean and saying, there's no food there. We don't want a lean animal. We're going to select for certain animals at different times of the year when they're fattiest. That is the real prized animal. And you know, on my YouTube channel, I talked to Miki Bendor, who is an anthropologist, a paleoanthropologist. And he still told me that in many indigenous cultures, the greeting that they use is translated as plenty of fat. So it's so interesting huh. that, yeah, they, That's awesome. they say, yeah, you know, they say like, hello or good morning or I'm good. And, and the, the way that translates is plenty of fat, plenty of fat. And that I think is so cool. In general, carnivores eat things like, you know, they eat chicken, they eat fish, they eat pork, they eat beef and ruminants, deer, and they eat the whole animal. So that you want to eat liver, you want to eat the other organs, you want to get an adequate amount of fat, they use salt. Salt is a very important uh, seasoning because when you go into ketosis, you're going to waste a lot of salt. So often people don't get enough salt when they're in ketogenic diets. People will also eat eggs, they'll eat fish eggs. And so there's a large variety of foods that you can eat, um, you know, seafood, things like this on a carnivore diet, but it's important to think of all the um, nutrients that you need, they're readily available in the animal kingdom. You just have to eat with some variety. Personally, I get up in the morning and I eat duck eggs. I really like ducks, duck eggs. They're just so rich and uh, creamy. Mm. So I will eat duck eggs in the morning and I will eat liver. I eat about four to six ounces of liver a day. I really appreciate the nutritional content of liver. And then I will eat some fat. And I, I prioritize fat in my diet. So I will eat some of this grass-fed animal fat and its actual trimmings from the animal. I'll either cook it up in a pan or just salt it and eat it raw. It's pretty good both ways. And then I will eat grass-fed meat. And it's usually steaks. And so I'll either do a New York or a tenderloin or a ribeye. And that's my, that's my morning meal. I usually eat two meals a day. I do time-restricted feeding where I have a, a, a smaller condensed window. I'll usually eat a late lunch at two or three in the afternoon, and that'll be my second meal of the day. And it's often pretty similar to the first meal. I'll probably eat some, some more duck eggs. Sometimes I just eat the yolks. Um, and then I will add some fat, and I'll eat some grass-fed uh, steak 